Gatwick Airport, an incoming flight from Madrid has put UK border agency officers on high alert. Obviously, we do tend to get connectors coming in from South America. So, basically, that's the reason why we're using a dog for this, just to see if anything comes up. The flight from Madrid is a known transit route for drug smugglers. So officers are carefully watching for any suspicious behavior. One passenger who originally started his journey in Bolivia is of particular interest. Yeah, it just seems a bit of an odd routing. He does seem quite nervous. In the customs channels, sniffer dog Barney gets a chance to assess the passenger. But with no indication given, Officer Fitz takes him aside for further questioning. Hello, sir. Hi. Where are you arriving from today? Sorry? Where are you arriving from today? Uh, I came in. I left Bolivia mm -hmm. after Argentina, mm -hmm. Madrid, and uh, I came in now here. Yeah. Right. I just want to come to one of the benches to have a quick word. OK. Are you aware that there are certain items you cannot bring into the UK? No. Yeah, such as not. drugs, no. okay. firearms. Yeah, no. I just need to answer the questions yeah. first, okay? Okay. There are certain things you can't bring into the UK, such as drugs, firearms, and I've seen material involving minors. Do you have any of those items in no. you at all? Okay then. Okay, if you leave that open, just leave that open, that's fine. We'll have a look at that. With communication way. difficult, Fitz proceeds with searching the nervous man's suitcase. Monopoly fan? After a quick rummage, an unwelcome visitor rears its head. Yeah. <laughs> Something crawling in there. Looks like you picked up a visitor. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm quite glad you did that, not me. You picked up a traveller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, you said you work, yes? What, what is it you actually do? I am a butcher, cut the chicken. Oh, you're a butcher? After searching the suitcase, Fitz is alarmed to find a passport that doesn't belong to the man. Okay, who, who is this? Uh, this is for my uh, my sister-in-law, wife in London. Why have you got her passport? The daughter of Vivian is my my sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. Sent this for gift to mother because the mother and uh, bring the daughter. Uh, you understand? Uh, right. Okay. But the communication barrier may still be a problem. Fitz remains suspicious of the man's story and his nervous behavior. At Bristol Airport, a flight has just landed from Tenerife. Officers are x-raying the luggage coming off the flight and straight away, they found some bags which are stuffed with cigarettes. He's all full. Yeah, same name, right? all the same name. Right. Um, at the moment, it appears like we've got three bags full of cigarettes um, under the same name, so it looks like it could be a commercial amount of thing. Having identified three bags, they're put back on the luggage carousel. Officers head inside to see who will collect them. The bags have been checked in under one name, but three separate passengers pick them up. As anticipated, they walk straight through the Nothing to Declare channel where Officer Joe is waiting to meet them. All three of you, do you want to come over? Yeah. And where have you arrived from today? Generally. You're all aware there are prohibitions and restrictions on entering the UK? Certain things you can't bring into the UK, such as uh, controlled drugs, and decent to see material, farms, explosives, things like that? Oh, you aware yeah, of these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. You aware um, the Canary Islands outside the European Union, so there's certain restrictions on how to cigarettes, alcohol and tobacco you can bring through. You aware of that? No. OK. No, Okay do, have, okay, do you have any cigarettes, alcohol, tobacco with you today? Yeah. 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 How much do you have? Um, 42 sleeves. 42 sleeves each. Okay. All three passengers are massively over their allowance. All right, the allowance is one of these each. Okay? Okay. That's the allowance, one of these each. Why is there one, one sleeve? Why is it? Because um, Canary Islands is outside the European Union. So you're only allowed 200 cigarettes each or 250 grams of tobacco. Well, I never knew that one. I thought it was, no. That's why they're so cheap over there, because you, you haven't well, that's paid, why I bought so you haven't paid duty it's on so the cheap. goods. Well, that's why I bought so many, I didn't realise. I thought, probably at that point. Yeah. 
but ignorance is no excuse. Travelers are required to know their allowances. Joe will have to unpack all three bags to find out just how big the haul is. In Gatwick, Officer Fitz is deciding what to do with the nervous Bolivian passenger who's been found carrying someone else's passport. He says he's bringing his sister-in-law's daughter's passport over because obviously she wants her daughter here. That's the reason why he's brought the passport over to get a visa. The suspicious passport is taken to immigration to be checked. Meanwhile, the passenger is led away to be searched. We have a lot of problems with drugs coming into the country, especially from South America. I have problems. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that you have any problems. What I'm saying uh, is there are... Me, I know, yeah. I know. Mate. You understand that? Yeah. We have problems with drugs mm -hmm. coming into the country. Now, to satisfy myself that you have nothing on you at all, what I want to do is a search of person, which is basically a rub-down search of your body. Whilst Fitz conducts a search of the passenger, his colleague Tony returns from immigration with the suspicious passport. I've been down to the, uh, what they call the primary control point, which is the passport control, and I've spoken to the chief immigration officer down there and the forgery officer. They're satisfied that the child's passport is genuine, but they say there's no way that the passport would be brought here for a visa to be issued. They wouldn't issue a visa like that. It's also got a refusal for a visa stamp in the back from another country. So they're going to come up and have a word with the gentleman and quite possibly hang on to the passport. Nothing is found during the search of the passenger, so officers swab test his shoes. See what happens again. If he's carrying packages internally, traces of drugs could be found in the sweat from his feet. And a high reading for cocaine makes officers suspect that he could be a swallower. What we've done is, we've done a swab on your shoes, a substance has been detected of cocaine. All right? So, the time is 17.55, and I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved on in the importation of a controlled drug internally. The man is led away for a full body x-ray. What I need you to do is take a deep breath in and out, then breathe in again, and then we'll when we tell you to breathe out, that's when it'll start rolling, all right? Okay. Okay, okay to the end, stay to the end. Breathe out. That's it. But it quickly becomes apparent that he hasn't swallowed any drugs. Negative. Yeah, OK. That's fine. Clear. Cool, thank you. Right. OK, all done. With the X-ray clear, the traces for cocaine are put down to contamination and the man is free to leave. The passport he was carrying on behalf of his sister-in-law was seized and handed over to the Bolivian embassy. Back at Bristol, Officer Joe is still unpacking the masses of cigarettes which have been brought back into the UK illegally from Tenerife. Did you plan to buy these cigarettes? Not, not, not right not there. Not low. But when we got there, we realised what the price was like, yeah. So you didn't plan to buy them? Oh, no. no. Joe spots something on the woman's luggage tag, which makes him doubt their story further. Who's, who's Mrs... A friend. A friend? Yeah. So all the, all the bags are under the name of Mrs... So who's Mrs... This is my bag. My name is on my bag. It was checked in under the name of Mrs... You don't, so, she, so, she, so you do know Miss. Yeah, yeah, but we don't know. I didn't know her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three bags, all being checked in under someone else's name, makes Joe suspect the cigarettes were never intended for personal use. The fact that they're all under the same name uh, makes me think that this Mrs. has. Uh, pay for these people to go to Canary Islands to bring back these cigarettes for her. So they're just basically carrying it for her, I'd imagine. Sign here just to say these goods have been seized from you today, OK? Just get a signature there, please. With duty in the region of £40 for each sleeve of 200 cigarettes, the three passengers almost cost the UK tax system £5,000.
Once the paperwork is complete, the passengers are free to leave without their cigarettes. They're given a warning and next time may face prosecution. OK, thanks for your time. I don't know. They may be telling the truth. I suspect not. <laughs> the cigarettes are bagged up, ready to be destroyed. Coming up, sniffer dog Diesel, one of Gatwick's longest serving canines, is put to the test. Basically, they've opened up the unit now, and uh, you can just see there's packages here and here. Coming up, suspicions are raised about a travelling Chelsea fan. He's got no idea what the stadium is. He's got no ticket, it would appear. He's got no idea who Chelsea are playing. At Gatwick Airport, the UK border agency isn't just preventing passengers from bringing illegal drugs into the country. Thousands of tons of freight passes through the airport every year. And officers work in tandem with sniffer dogs to check packages for illegal substances. Today, Officer Lorna and sniffer dog Diesel have arrived at the cargo hangar to assess a small part of today's consignment. We're just over at the freight sheds and uh, we're going to cover the freight that's just come off of the Virgin Bridgetown flight. So we'll see what he does. These. Looking for any interest from the dog, really, and then one of the anti smugglers will have a look and see if there's any cocaine or heroin. As one of the airport's longest serving dogs, Diesel has sniffed out dozens of Class A drug seizures over the years, making him one of the officer's most valuable assets. And it doesn't take long for him to start showing some interest around one of the packages. The box contains a vacuum cleaner. So officers remove it from its packaging to take a closer look. And Diesel just can't keep away from it. With a suspected drug concealment, there's only one way to find out what's inside. It looks like two of the screws have had glue put on them, so it makes it harder to get inside. As you see, he's nearly getting into it now. He's just dismantling the whole thing, so we'll just see what he can find. Here's to be underneath here some packages. Oh, yeah, black packages. Basically, they've opened up the unit now, and uh, you can just see there's packages here and here. So what I'm going to do is get the dog over, have another look at it, and see if the dog indicates. And almost instantly, Diesel makes another of his trademark indications on the packages inside the vacuum cleaner. OK, as you saw, as the dog got close to the scent, uh, it gave a free stare indication. Um, basically, it just freezes at the scent and won't move. And until the handler throws in a tennis ball, and basically that was it. that was a perfect indication. And as you see, the packages are coming out, and they're only small, and they look properly tight wrapped. That's why he had to get his nose right on the source of the scent. All right, what we'll do when we find things like this, we'll uh, do a, what we call a field test. So I'm going to put some of the powder onto this filter paper, just put this liquid onto it. If it's cocaine, it will just flash up like a very turquoise aquamarine blue. It usually takes less than half a second to a second to do that. Let's see. It's going this turquoise colour straight away. That basically indicates the presence of cocaine on the powder. It's another impressive find by Diesel. Thanks to his sensitive nose, cocaine worth more than £8,000 will not reach the UK streets. Across at Gatwick's North Terminal, it's business as usual. The flight has just arrived from Dubai and border agency officers are processing passengers passing through immigration. One passenger from Cameroon has caught the attention of officers after he claimed he'd come to the UK to watch a football match. These are customs red and green channels. If you've got anything to declare to customs, you need to use the red channel. If you've got any cigarettes, any alcohol, anything like that. If you're not sure, if you're not sure, go into the red channel. If you're quite happy, you've got nothing like that, you can come to the green channel with me. I just have my money. OK, how much money are you carrying today? Uh, 80,000? Yeah. Is that what, what currency is that in? Is that in dollars, dollar, dollar, sterling? Dollars. Dollar. All right, we'll have a chat about that. Come this way. It's a huge amount of cash for one passenger to be carrying. The man has a lot of questions to answer about exactly what he's doing here, so Officer Chris pulls him aside in the customs channels. Are all the bags yours? No. Are all the bags yours? Yes, yeah. Three bags are mine. OK. Did you pack all the bags yourself? Yeah. They can anything in your bags for anyone else. 
It's only giving you gifts or goods to carry for them into this country. And as well as the cigarettes... Very simply, he's um, Cameroonian, but he's also got residency in Thailand. So he's coming here, allegedly, to see Chelsea play. He's got no idea where the stadium is. He's got no ticket, it would appear. He's got no idea which hotel he's stopping in. He's got no idea who Chelsea are playing. So what sort of things are you going to do whilst you're here, then? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please, Tony, that one. Officer Tony steps in to help with the investigation. My friend is just using a little swabbing device. It just checks if you come into contact with anything like, you know, drugs we spoke about earlier. It's just like a little sniffer dog. And a small trace reading for cocaine deepens the intrigue. It's, um, it shows traces, but it's not hitting the red zone, but it's still a significant um, link, so it's up to Chris how he wants to play it. Whilst going through the man's belongings, Chris has made an unusual discovery. I'll have a look at some of these for me. Gains me a bit. What are they? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Just her extensions. Yeah. Is that your line of business? This is my business. I have salon. I, ah. I have my own salon. Yep. And I produce this. Right, let's pack that back up for you. Are you sure? Let's if you're happy, that's a bit of time. I'll look at that bag next if you like. Thank you. With suspicious reasons being given for the purpose of his visit, officers will need to take their search to the next level. In the south terminal, a flight has just landed from Tripoli in Libya. As luggage is being unloaded from the flight, officers have noticed a strange odor coming from a number of suitcases. The luggage is placed back on the carousel, and as the pungent suitcases are collected, the owners are stopped for questioning in the customs channels. Okay, is it just fish? Nothing yeah, else? fish, yeah. Nothing else but fish, yeah? Just food. My mum, right. I've been for my brother, sisters, my right. mum, yeah, yeah, okay, but it all belongs to you, doesn't it? Yeah, but some of you are gifted that. Well, no, you said, when I asked you the initial questions, you said these bags were yours and yours alone. No, because I put it on my name, that's what yeah. I'm saying, no, because it's it, it the key. Yeah, because it's it my name, I cannot lie to you, that's why. From outside the EU, there's a strict allowance of 20 kilograms of fish per person. It's become apparent that the woman's travelling companions are people she's just met in the baggage hall. They, they are first time they come in this country. They don't speak English. I was happy and happy because they were traveling with children. Officers suspect that the woman may have befriended the other passengers so they would unwittingly share her imported food allowance. The first suitcase is stuffed to the brim with smoked fish. So if she's carrying any more, she'll be well over her allowance. It's just dried smoked fish, it's whether it's dried or, or wet fish. If you go over the uh, 20 kilos uh, allowance, uh, it's all liable to seizure. And it doesn't look particularly appetising. Officers open the woman's second suitcase, which is also stuffed to the brim with smoked fish. It's clear she has well exceeded her allowance. The regulations are 20 kilos of fish. If you go over that, it's deemed as a commercial amount and we're entitled to take the whole lot. So in this case, it was about 43 kilos of fish, uh, just for the one passenger. Despite being way over her allowance, the passenger is far from happy that she'll be leaving with nothing. 20 kilos. 20 kilos? Why don't you give my 20 kilos? The 43 kilograms of fish are bagged up and ready to be destroyed. The disgruntled woman is given a warning and released. In Gatwick's North Terminal, officers are still investigating a Cameroonian passenger who's carrying over 80,000 US dollars in cash. Tony. Does that say UN security on it? What? 
Looks like it. The unusual find makes officers suspect that the stamp may be being used for fraudulent purposes. In his bag, we found a, a stamp which says UN security code. Why would you have something like that? I think it's probably worth running it by our colleagues uh, in special branch, as was called, the counter-terrorism unit now. Um, this is very odd. So they may be very interested in that. If you don't want to talk to Jim, no, no problem. Yeah. Officer Chris heads over to the counter-terrorism team with a suspicious stamp. Meanwhile, his colleague Tony continues his search of the passenger's belongings and investigates the large amount of money he's carrying. He has um, rather a lot of cash with him. Um, he's required, when he comes into the EU, to make a declaration of anything more than 10,000 euros. Uh, what you need to do is complete this form yeah. with the details of what you've got there. This is a leaflet that explains to you what the law is, why you have to make a declaration, OK? But at the moment, the moment what he says he's doing is coming here to, as a tourist, but also to look for stock for his shop, because he has a hair salon back where he lives. So he's got quite a bit of cash just to fund the purchases of that, as well as to stay here. So, obviously, as it's more than €10,000 that he has to declare, just waiting for him to do a declaration. Whilst Chris and Tony were happy that the man's cash was for legitimate business purposes, a further investigation was launched into his dodgy UN stamp. He was taken away by the counter-terrorism unit for further questioning. It's early morning at Gatwick Airport. In the north terminal, a flight has just touched down from Port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago. With flights from the Caribbean known to be a popular transit route for drug smugglers, Officers use various methods to check passengers arriving in the country. One male passenger has been stopped in the customs channels. He claims to be a student and has come to the UK to visit his aunt. Officers question him further about his travel plans. Sorry, I heard you, my colleagues say that um, somebody helped you pay for your ticket. Yeah. Who paid for your ticket? Your aunt. In. In Trinidad. In Trinidad. Okay. Wow, so you got a club ticket. So you sat in club. How much did you pay? 7,001 What's that in sterling? Roughly, you know? It's like 600 pounds. 600 pounds, wow. For a club ticket, that's good. But this wasn't the man's original ticket. So the first ticket was a return ticket which I couldn't follow back. So you couldn't follow that back because you were late. Yourself, yeah. Do you have your return ticket with you? No, I don't have that here. OK. All right, it's going to get an iron track for you. Yeah, Not sure. much baggage there, is it? Yeah. You got no other baggage? No. That was it? That's all. Wow, travelling light. The guy's come in from a week's trip to Trinidad. Uh, he's a student here, so he's obviously not earning lots of money. His baggage doesn't support the fact that he could travel as a, a club passenger, and so it just doesn't look like a very good story at the moment, but we'll see. I'm just going to do a narcotic swab. Have you used any drugs while you've been away? No. OK. Officer Andy swabs each of the man's bags to see if he's come into contact with any drugs. Mm. The swab comes back negative but a concerned Andy still isn't happy. It just doesn't tie together, so we're going to search him. We've got sufficient grounds to search him, and then we're going to consider whether we want to put him through the X-ray to see if he's got anything inside him. The man is taken to a private room to be searched. But after finding nothing, Andy decides to follow his instinct and take the man for an X-ray. You get to, to know what's normal, and so when you get something that's unusual, it sticks out. The man agrees to do a full body scan. Officers will find out shortly whether their hunch about the student passenger was correct. At Birmingham airports, hundreds of passengers are waiting to board planes for worldwide destinations. In the departure lounge, passengers carrying cash are being stopped to ensure they have no links to criminal activity. 
Right, where does this money come from? Officers have the power to question passengers carrying over a thousand euros in cash, and anything over ten thousand euros must be declared. A couple waiting to board a flight to Dubai have been stopped. The male passenger has admitted to carrying three thousand pounds in cash, and officers want to find out more. So you show me the money so that I can have a wee look at it. In total, sir, you told me you had three thousand pounds. There is more than that here, and now we have another no, two in I told, I asked you how much money in total, no? Right, so whose money, whose money is this? Right, so that's your money, and this is your money. Okay, do you know how much you have in here, sir? Officer Dell steps in as a translator. So when I asked you how much you had and you said three, and you've got five here and four here, that would have been a lie then, sir. Is there any more money in this bag? Okay, just leave it, I'll check it. Having been lied to already, officers want to search the bags for themselves. Did you forget about this money? Can you say to him, I asked him, had he any more money? And he said, no, this is obviously money. As the money keeps on coming, officers need to find out where it's all come from. The man explains that he doesn't work and his wife only works part time. The thousands of pounds suddenly look decidedly dodgy. What bank account did he take the money from? Does he have the card or a receipt? And let him know that I'm going to phone the bank and check he's telling me the truth. Can he show me his wallet? The man's bank card will be used to run checks, but as he hands over his wallet, even more cash is discovered. How much is in here? That's more money from the, apparently more money from the relatives. The evasive answers are starting to become frustrating. What I'm looking at is, is, is to get as a source of the cash just now. But if I wasn't working, I wouldn't have eight and a half grand in my pocket. As the flight time approaches, officers urgently need some answers about where the money has come from, or the couple risk having all of their cash seized. Back at Gatwick, a student passenger from Trinidad and Tobago, who's suspected of swallowing packages of drugs, has agreed to an x-ray of his body. And breathe out, all the way, and stop. Stand still, stand still, stand still. OK, you can start breathing again. The results come back immediately. And I would say that this gentleman is full of packages. Caught red-handed, the man looks resigned to his fate. Uh, we've got a swallower in the north terminal off the port of Spain. He's just had an x-ray, just confessed to swallowing 60-odd packages and we'll be bringing him over very shortly. With potentially lethal packages inside him, the man's safety is now the main concern. All I would say to you is that the sooner you can get rid of these packages from inside of you, the better. It's obviously very dangerous for you to have them inside you, OK? You all right? He's asked to go to the toilet, so we shall uh, take him into our uh, special toilet suite. We'll have to sit and watch him, unfortunately, uh, and hopefully he'll start the process of producing packages. The toilet the man will use is a special facility that will collect any packages he passes so they can be cleaned and kept as evidence. And it doesn't take long for him to start producing the goods. Right, there is one package there okay, that you've just produced. I have to tell you that is now seized as forfeit. Quite clean, but he's, he's obviously struggling. It's quite a big package. So he now wants to, to have something to eat and drink to try and uh, force the, the natural process. Um, could be up to five grams a package if they're all that sort of size. So half a kilo, a kilo of coke, something like that, inside him. Half a kilo of cocaine is worth approximately 25,000 pounds. It's a sizable discovery for the officers, but a very dangerous pursuit for the man. We have a duty of care just to keep an eye on him and make sure that if we see anything untoward, we can get there very quickly. 
All they can do now is wait for nature to take its course. Back in Birmingham, officers are still trying to establish the origins of eight and a half thousand pounds in cash that a couple are carrying in their hand luggage. If he only gets 48 pounds a week, he'll be an income support. The couple's income from benefits and a part-time job don't even cover their monthly outgoings. Is a mortgage, a mortgage at Hardy Colon? Kinney, Kinney, Min. 672. Yeah. Otherwise, money's coming from it. Officers are struggling to understand how the couple could have saved such a substantial amount of cash. He's only on benefits, so, you know, to have eight and a half grand with that amount of money coming in, it doesn't seem possible. Anyone claiming benefits in the UK must inform the Department for Work and Pensions when going abroad. Is it notified the DWP is travelling today? Was it this year? The DWP is this year? No, it's not informed. Okay. Don't worry, we'll let them know. You, you get their national insurance numbers, I'll phone DWP and check. Concerned that they may be defrauding the UK tax system, officers will leave no stone unturned in their checks of the couple. I've got a guy just now stopped him. He initially had three grand. He's now up to eight and a half grand. He's on benefit. Uh, the, the, the money doesn't even you know, kind of match up. Uh, I'm thinking of just doing a referral with DWP after speaking to them, but I just want to check with you before I let him go. Officers wouldn't want the couple to miss their flight unnecessarily, so if the fraud investigation team agree, the couple will be investigated on their return. OK, cheers, boss. Thanks. Bye-bye. With permission granted, the couple are allowed to continue their journey, but will be asked further questions on their return. If we can prove a link to the money, if it comes from a proceed of crime, then we would seize the cash. There's, there's no direct proof there that the, the gentleman's committed any offence. It was just the fact he lied initially that, that drew my suspicions. With seconds to spare, the couple eventually make their flight to Dubai. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Coming up, a man with someone else's credit cards is given a lesson in international law. This will find anywhere in the world. No, they're not your credit cards. Coming up, in Gatwick, a crude attempt at cocaine smuggling. This, this consumer is a bit of an old-fashioned one, really. I mean, we've got about two and a half to three kilos of cocaine. At Gatwick Airport South Terminal, a flight has arrived from Bridgetown in Barbados. As a known source area for the production of Class A drugs, border agency officers are scanning suitcases to search for any illegal substances. In the airport's custody suite, one male passenger from the flight has been arrested on suspicion of bringing a controlled drug into the country. The X-ray has revealed hidden concealments in the corners of his suitcases. So the custody officer, okay, my role here is to ensure you're given your rights any um, just that I was um, unaware that what I brought through. Officer Niels takes the two suspect suitcases away to be examined further. This bag uh, came off the British Airways flight from Bridgetown this morning, and while the bags were being unloaded, um, became suspicious about the riveting on the sides of the case. They don't look original. If you have a look here, a bit closer, you'll see there's a, a ridge here, it's, which is quite thick. Normally, they wouldn't be like if, uh, as thick as that. The contents of the suitcase are removed to get a better look at the hidden concealment. Photographic evidence is taken of the discoveries. Looks like there's a concealment here underneath the corner. There's a black, like a black package. And with a similar package found in every corner, the second case also needs to be examined for hidden concealments. OK, right. Go. So we'll just see what we suspect is in here. If you look closer, you can actually see where they've taken the original screws out and they put new bolts in, rivets in. You can see it all the way around. As the man waits in a cell to find out what his fate may be, Officers conduct a field test on the substance found in the suitcases. If it's what we think it's going to be, it's going to be cocaine, hydrochloride, the, uh, the reaction would be a, a, a turquoise blue colour. There we are. And you can see it straight away. 
There we are, there's a nice, nice reaction there. We think there's probably a reasonable amount, so about a kilo in each, kilogram in each case. So we're looking at about two kilos probably. Two kilos of cocaine has an approximate street value of £100,000. It was an audacious attempt at smuggling a huge amount of drugs. The man was eventually taken to court and despite pleading not guilty, was sentenced to seven years in prison. At Gatwick's North Terminal, another flight has just come in from the Caribbean. Hey guys, you've just got through single file right over to the right-hand side for me, please. With a spate of recent drug seizures, passengers from Jamaica are rigorously checked by drug detection dogs as they disembark the flight. Border agency officers working in immigration have become suspicious of one male passenger's reasons for entering the country, so he's taken aside for questioning. Who, who gave you that suitcase? Mm -hmm. Who gave you what that What was his name? Sorry? Danny. Danny. Yeah. The passenger appears nervous, so Officer Paul wants to find out the true nature of his visit to the UK. Do you have any goods to declare? OK, if you want to pop your bag up here for me, please. You've come in from Nicaragua. Uh -huh. You flew to Panama. Yes. Then you went to Kingston. Yes. OK, what did you do whilst you were in Kingston? Just to stay one night. Yeah. Then I took the taxi. Then I came out to, um, to the airport. Yeah. OK, and to do this case, was it given it to you in Nicaragua? Yes. Why didn't you use your own case? It was too small. You know how too much space to put everything. Right, OK. The man told immigration he came to the UK to visit his fiancée, but Paul wants to know more details. So what are you going to do whilst you're here? Just visiting <clears throat> not my fiancé family. When did you get engaged? What month? What month, March. When you get out of here today, where are you going to? I'm going to Silverstone by car with my brother-in-law, um, Sarah. So they're waiting for you outside? Yes, but I have to, yeah, but I have to pay the gas. You have to what? Pay the gas. The petrol? Yeah, you have to pay the petrol? Yes. So who's actually picking you up? Sarah. Sarah's picking Sarah you up? Sarah and David. Your, your fiancé is picking you yes, up? Yes, Sarah. And you have to pay the petrol? Right, okay. Let's go have a look at your bag then. A routine search of the man's bag is carried out. With his suspicious story, Paul wants to rule out the possibility he's carrying any drugs. And how much did your ticket cost you to fly to the UK? 1,100. 1, US dollars. Yes. And where did you get that money from? From working. I have to sell out uh, to become money from here. Sold everything. The man continues to be quizzed about his visit to the UK. But his answers to basic questions are still unconvincing. How long have you known her for? Two years, two years and a half. Three and a half years? Yes, I, no, two years. Two years, two. two years and a half. How long? Two years. I met her on 29, no, on the 30th of December 1998. 1998? Yeah. 1998? Yeah. That's 12 years ago. No, no sorry, 2008. 2008. Nothing unusual has been found in the man's bag. But his nervous behaviour and story discrepancies make officers suspect he may not be telling the truth. You use drugs at all? Mm -hmm. No, never. You could use my blood and test it. OK. Are you happy to have an X-ray? An X-ray? Yeah, just to make sure you haven't swallowed anything. Like here? No, an X-ray, a scan, body X-ray. Uh, yeah, no problem. No problem? Yes, yeah, no problem. You'll be for scan, no problem. I'm thinking now it's probably more likely to be an immigration issue. So we're going to do a quick SOP on him, a quick scan, just to make sure there's nothing, and then take him back to immigration. In a few minutes, any goods the passenger may be hiding on his body will be revealed. It's not just passengers that the border agency search for drugs. In the freight terminal, an illegal concealment has been found in some packages from South America. OK, what we have here is a courier package. It's uh, coming from what appears to be a private individual going to a company in London. Three old books in total. Pages have been glued together and, and hollowed out to reveal uh, a package of uh, cocaine. A field test is conducted to confirm the substance definitely is cocaine. Some cocaine out. Should go a lovely turquoise colour. Oh, there we go. This, this concealment is a bit of an old-fashioned one, really. I haven't seen this uh, 
for quite a while. I mean, we've got about two and a half to three kilos of cocaine. But something else has been found amongst the packages. They've done a letter to try and give it some credibility. Dear Stephen, things here are very difficult anyway. We keep working and trying to survive. The other 15 books you asked me, I'm searching for them. Greeting to Tony and Steffi. Big hug. And as long as I find the other books, I'll be sending them to you. So maybe they'll have another go. It's a seizure worth over £100,000. Further inquiries will be made into the background of this and uh, consideration will be made whether it, it can be done under a controlled delivery um, and see if anyone can be picked up, arrested and charged for the, uh, the importation. Back at Gatwick's North Terminal, Officers speaking to a passenger from Nicaragua have discovered another reason to doubt the legitimacy of his visit to the UK. Who's Giselle McCoy then? Hmm? Who is Giselle? Giselle, is it? McCoy? Is that something in the But whose is it? You found them? Yeah. That's not really an explanation, is it? That's a crime anyway. That's a crime anywhere in the world. No. They're not your credit cards. Like for example, if somebody finds my credit card, he cannot use it. And my bank won't pay. If someone finds your credit card, they can no. use it. No, they can't. You haven't come up and given me a reasonable explanation as to why you have three credit cards and maybe somebody else. OK. With more holes in the man's story, it's hoped that a body search will provide some answers. Just going to do a quick okay. search person. We need to search you. Make sure you're not carrying anything you shouldn't be. Okay? Yeah, Oh, here, we're going to search you here. The passenger reveals that he's already been subjected to a body search at the start of his journey in Jamaica, as they too thought he was suspicious. That's only going to be a rub down. I'm just going to rub your body down, OK? Just make sure you haven't got anything on you. Yeah. And if you pass me your shoes. A routine swab test will be done on his shoes, but officers are more concerned by what they've already found. He's got three credit cards in the name of another, another lady and he can't come up with any explanation as to why he's got them. And he's pretty much refusing to answer as to why he's got them as well. He just keeps saying he's found them, and then he said he knew the woman. So it's negative. A negative reading suggests he's not carrying any packages, but his story is suspicious enough to put him through the X-ray. Just stand facing that way when I say go. Do you understand? Yes, sir. OK, thank you. Breathe out. Despite the man's nervous behaviour, as the scanned images come through, it's clear he's no drug smuggler. Can't see anything now, can you? No. I'd say it's clear. OK, it's clear. We're going to take you back upstairs to the immigration officer now, OK? So I'm going to hold on to this in the meantime. I'm going to hand it to them to okay. With nothing found on the scan, the man is escorted back to immigration. He was eventually denied entry into the UK and was deported back to Jamaica the following day.